Hello everyone, I'm Eugene and welcome to my very first drum tutorial. I've got a lot of requests from my friends recently on how to learn to play fast double bass. In this video I'll try to answer as much questions as I can. It consists of two parts, a theoretical and a practical one. Both of them are very important to understand if you want to have great progress in your playing. Most of the material is already covered in other drumming videos, DVDs and perhaps for some of you there will be nothing new to learn, but I still want to try to motivate you. Ok, so let's get started. As I mentioned before, this part is as much important as the practice itself. You're gonna need to build up a certain attitude towards the whole concept of drumming. There are three main things you should always think of if you want to achieve high speed. Patience. Perseverance, Discipline Nobody has ever become a world famous drummer in one day or night. If you think you're really talented and don't need to practice, then you are totally hopeless so just turn this video off right away. On the other hand, there's no need to be desperate either. Because we're all human, everybody starts with equal chances, even the drummers you look up at. It took even them years to perfect their skills as it will take you to do the same. Always focus on your goal. A lot of drummers waste their precious time looking for some easier way to achieve it. Some secret techniques, shortcuts, cheats, tricks… Remember, there are no such things. Of course, they do this because they are too lazy to take the harder path of persistence or because they are not motivated enough by the results so far. I understand that, I was in the same situation a few years ago. Because it is the hardest at the beginning, many become discouraged and don't even try to progress further. I went through all of this myself, so I know how do you feel. If you decided that you are tired of being able to play 16th notes at the tempo of for example 180 bpm, then you should think to yourself every day, I want to play faster than that. Most of the drummers actually know what to do to make progress, but for some strange reason they just don't do it. I was like this myself, I lack motivation. So to get out of this dead end you need willpower. The thing you want to start with is to have faith in yourself. You can do it, I guarantee that, I did that and you are not worse than anyone else. Everybody has the potential to overcome this, but not everyone has the desire and will to become better. You say you love drums but you don't have any progress, spare me this bullshit, I've heard it one million times. You don't need to prove anything to me or anyone else, prove it to yourself, don't talk for once, just show yourself you're capable. Ok, so now we can get to the practical part of the video. The first thing I would like to start with is discussing what you wear. It doesn't really matter what shoes do you put on, as long as you feel comfortable any pair of shoes should do. But remember, playing with your feet is really based on feeling the pedals. That's why you will get used to your shoes quickly. If you decide to change them, it'll be tougher than you think. Well, for me it is hard to play barefooted after playing most of the time in these running shoes. They give me some additional weight which I'm used to. Wear whatever pants you like, as long as it does not block your movement so you can play freely. I prefer to rehearse in underpants, they give me as much space as I need. I used the Pearl Eliminator Demon Drive double pedal for almost three and a half years now. These are very great pedals, it's more than you need to be able to play in tempos 240 bpm and above. I use the footboard as a longboard. If you want to play fast, you're gonna need to make your springs tense. Mine are at maximum. But if it's too much for you, loosen them a bit. Later you can increase the tension. The angle between the beater and the bass drum is almost 90 degrees. I know for most of the drummers it's a lot, but again, I didn't come to this immediately. I started with looser springs and smaller angle. The footboard itself is pretty high. Perhaps all of you have heard that you need to have a minimum 90 degrees angle between your hamstrings and calves. I would recommend to do that as well. Do not sit on the edge of your chair, it sets you off balance. You will be forced to play with your whole legs and we don't want that. Try to sit on the farther part of the chair. As a result your snare, toms and cymbals may be pretty far away from you. I suggest you to put the toms on stands and bring them closer. Otherwise you'll be leaning forward and stretching your back, which is not that bad, but you'll feel tired after holding your back straight like this for an hour or two. 
You need to make sure that the weight of your body is centered over your chair. Do not lean against your pedals, that's a very common mistake. While using your hip flexor muscles, raise your legs and find out if you're sitting in the right position. It might be a little weird for you if you never sat like that before, but you'll get used to it soon, so don't worry. Playing fast with your feet is similar to playing fast with your hands. Obviously, you won't use your whole arms at fast tempo, only wrists or fingers. The same is with double bass. The faster you get, the less leg motion and more ankle motion you use. Now this is very important for you to remember. If you haven't played with ankles before, then you must get used to it from now on if you want to learn to play fast. The motion you need to learn is this. Bounce your footboard just like a basketball. Only ankles, no leg. Practice this a lot to gain control. It's not as easy as it looks. There are basically two types of swivel motion. I call them the ankle swivel motion and the pressure swivel motion. Perhaps for some of you it sounds stupid, but you'll get it in a few minutes. The first one obviously comes from using the ankle motion while swiveling to the right and left to keep your muscles relaxed. It is something natural your body does to prevent your muscles from burning. The more you move, the less tiresome your fast double bass becomes. You should let your body breathe. Don't let your muscles become tense. Of course, there are a lot of drummers who play really tight and almost don't move their bodies. I have nothing against them, only respect. But in my opinion, drumming should be something you enjoy and not being struggling with. So try to stay relaxed as much as possible and get as much pleasure from your playing as you can. Although it looks almost the same as the first one, the motion is totally different. You start with pushing your footboard down, then apply the swiveling motion and afterwards ease the pressure. You will get something like this. I use the ankle swivel at slower tempos till 220 bpm. At faster tempos I use less ankle and more pressure control. Maybe some of the drummers will judge me because of this, but for me it works really good and as long as you can play it, use whatever methods necessary. There is gonna be nothing new in this part. I would recommend only one exercise for you, but make sure that you apply all of the techniques I've talked about. There isn't gonna be progress if you won't work exactly on the motions and position. So just do a lot of endurance. 16th notes, slow tempo, 10 minutes minimum. It's better to spend more time in a slower tempo than play fast but for a shorter period of time. For me 10 minutes is a good warm up in a tempo of 180 bpm. I did 170 for 1 hour but that was too much, maybe there is little sense in doing that. So now I do 170 bpm for 30 minutes and it's perfect for me. Of course you'll have to determine your tempo and time for yourself because it depends on your level. But don't forget that you should not struggle, stay relaxed and try to do something while playing like I do. Playing video games on your iPad, eating candies, or listening to classic music while having a cookie with milk, and much, much more. That just helps you to endure this boredom faster. What do you think how famous musicians become great players? They play one or two hundred shows in a year for ten years and that's all the practice they need. If you don't play that much and the live show or studio experience is ten or maybe twenty times as much valuable as a rehearsal at home, then I would suggest to compensate this by playing endurance. Basically the more you hit the bass drum the faster you're gonna play. 170 bpm for 30 minutes is 20,400 hits in total. Try to do 20 or 30,000 hits each day for a week. You'll be flying in no time, I guarantee you that. So remember, the first thing you'll need to do is to build up the right attitude and the flow of thoughts. You're gonna need to decide whether you want this or not. After you did, just practice and don't think about the process. Just turn your brains off, cause they'll be only in your way. Don't stop, don't think that you didn't make any progress so far, it'll just hold you back. Wonders don't happen in one week. Have faith, believe in yourself and you can do it. So try this little experiment, do endurance as often as you can. Soon you'll notice a huge improvement in your playing and this improvement will motivate you to play even more. That's how you get out of this stuck in 180 BPM dead end. 
that's the only way. I hope you enjoyed this video and you were able to learn something new from it. I will appreciate any feedback and will gladly answer your questions. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share and comment. See you soon, goodbye, Eugene out.